Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about mood disorders. Okay. So mood disorders are when you have a disturbance in your emotions, meaning um, your, your normal reactions are magnified. So what you might feel um, sad about one thing could be completely crushing for another person. Uh, there's two major factors when it comes to those disturbances. There is the term mania and the term depression. So mania is a period of abnormally high emotion and activity. So for example, someone who gets on a run and they're doing like seven activities all at once. Um, and they, they just keep moving from thing to thing to thing to keep themselves busy. Um, depression, on the other hand, is that period of feeling uh, down or sad or drained of anything. So this can be someone who doesn't get out of bed for more than four hours a day. Um, that doesn't mean they have to be sleeping the whole time, but they're just staying in bed. Um, and that's not meaning like you're having a Netflix day um, and you're getting out to get snacks and then coming back to bed. The, uh, this is where you're just laying around. Yeah. Uh, there are two major types of mood disorders, major depressive disorder and bipolar disorder. So we're going to talk about both of those. Um, major depressive disorder will be our first. So as you can see on the next slide, it is the most common disability in the world. 6% uh, of all men um, have been diagnosed with it, with 10% of women being diagnosed. It is uh, similar to other um, diagnoses, uh, for different disorders in that you have to hit multiple symptoms before you are clinically assigned that disorder. So in this case, there are nine major symptoms, um, for a clinical diagnosis, which means you have to have those symptoms for more than two weeks. Uh, cause again, everyone can feel high and low at different points of their life and it, it might take a day or two, but then you, you tend to shift into a more calm state, but it's when you have those, um, symptoms for a persistent amount of time that you have the diagnosis. And again, it's not just one. In this case, you need to have five out of the nine in order to get that clinical diagnosis by a, uh, doctor. So for symptoms, uh, depressed mood, most of the day, uh, little interest in basically all activities, um, significant changes in weight or appetite, uh, sleeping more or less than usual, um, than usual for you. Okay. Agitated or decreased level of activity, uh, fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or inappropriate guilt. So you feel guilty about something that's, that doesn't have anything to do with you. Uh, diminished ability to think or concentrate, uh, and recurrent thoughts of death or suicide. Again, you don't need to have all of those. You need to have at least five for extended periods of time, which is usually over two weeks. They also need to have, um, those symptoms need to produce <coughs> distress or impaired functioning. Um, the reason that we have that two week time frame is we do recognize that moods are affected by hormones. And as you probably know from health class, hormones run in cycles for men and women. So if you have a hormone imbalance, um, as the cycle continues, you'll see those, those moods lift and, and fall again. And that's, um, different than a full depressive disorder. Okay. So that's one. The other, uh, big one is bipolar disorder. It used to be known as manic depressive disorder, but obviously major depressive disorder and manic depressive disorder is not distinguishable. So bipolar disorder is what that is called today. If you see old movies and they're referencing manic depressive, they actually mean bipolar. So bipolar <clears throat> is when people alternate between depression and mania, sort of like the North and South pole. That's why there's that flipping. Um, it's less common than major depressive disorder, but has worse effects on the individual. So not as often, but, uh, much more dangerous. Um, it tends to follow cyclical patterns. I mean, again, the hormones could be involved. Uh, and, um, it's just a, a interesting, 
<coughs> mixture of that wave of mania followed by depression um, often tends p to have people kind of skew their perception of the world, which is why it is believed that several historical characters um, probably had that disorder. Um, a couple that is a large argument in terms of they've probably had it was Tom, uh, sorry, Mark Twain, the author of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, as well as Vincent Van Gogh, the artist who painted Starry Night. Um, they lived at a time where there was no treatment. Today, you can be treated for uh, bipolar disorder. You are treated with the medication of lithium. Sorry, lithium carbonate. Um, and uh, as well as therapy. You need to have medication and therapy in order to be treated for it. So. Um, before we move on, that uh, I want to talk to you about your assignment for today, which is diagnosing after death. Like I said, a lot of different... Um, Understandings that have come about with the modern DSM is the identification of symptoms to indicate whether or not people have disorders. And a big thing that people like to do is now that they understand symptoms and what they can indicate is they like to look back in history at famous people um, and theorize whether or not they had those disorders. So there's a very simple article for you to um, skim. Uh, or read it's it's very quick read um, where they took a couple of, of people they identified as famous and and um, they call them historical geniuses meaning that they think a different way than the average person at the time and the believed psychiatric conditions that they had um, and what you're gonna do is just pick one they give a whole list of them just pick one and state um, whether or not you agree with the diagnosis based on what you know about the disorder and what the article presents as proof. Um, so is there enough written in that article to identify those symptoms that you uh, state for that disorder? Okay, so that's the assignment for today. All right, going back to your lecture, other mood disorders, um, dysthymic disorder, uh, is a low, dark, or sad mood on most days for at least two years. Um, you can feel hopelessness. Uh, you could have too much or too little sleep, low self-esteem, poor eating, poor concentration, um, which, if you remember, are all uh, symptoms of uh, major depressive disorder. The difference is um, dysthymic disorder is the least severe form of depression uh you can feel bad but still be completely functional so the big difference between major depressive disorder and dysthymic disorder is it doesn't impair functioning whereas major depressive you are not able to hold a job or um, maintain your daily activities because of that massive feeling in this case you just feel awful all the time but you still get up and do what you have to do okay uh, and another mood disorder that many of you, I assume, have heard of is seasonal affective disorder. The idea that, um, you experience more depression during the winter months, which is, um, true. Like, um, it, it, you have much higher cases of, um, depression and suicide in winter months. And the general argument is it's actually based on sunlight, how much, um, sunlight you get um, and the vitamin D that goes along with it and it um, has to do with um, your body getting the nutrients it needs to be able to maintain correct hormone balances. If you live in a place like northern Alaska where at some points of the year there's only four hours of light and the rest of the time it's dark, um, you see people... Uh, putting in their offices or in their home UV lights where they turn it on for certain parts of the day. Um, not self tanning beds, not that, uh, but just to give that light in the, the room. That's what that image is. You can see the, the lady's bright light. That's a UV light used at that time. Um, they also make like little visors you can wear and turn the light on. You kind of sit with that for like 20 minutes a day. Okay. So, um, what do we know about mood disorders in terms of causing? What are the causes? We know there are biological factors. Um, 
it's definitely inheritable. Um, identical twin studies found that um, major depressive disorder was a 50% chance of inheriting, meaning like if your twin had it, there was a 50% chance that you had it as well. Bipolar disorder was a 70% um, inheritable. Uh, so if your twin had it, there was a 70% chance that you also had it, um, which is a very, very high number. So clear um, factor in terms of hereditary and that probably has to do with maintaining um, hormones. Also, brain function was a factor. So they did PET scans um, on people who were suffering from depression. They noticed there was less brain activity during depression as well as an imbalance of neurotransmitters, um, particularly serotonin and neuroepinephrine. So the ones that help you regulate your straight, uh, sorry, your sleep, um, and, uh, your activity levels. Okay. So that is biological factors in terms of, uh, it's very good to know that for hereditary. So people who know, um, a family member who gets it, that they're able to identify, um, if they notice those symptoms in themselves, but also, um, the, the brain scans of it is, is far more indicative because that can give you, um, definitive numbers in terms of what is happening in your own system. Uh, then on top of the biological factors, you have the social cognitive factors. So you have that concept of learned helplessness. So remember, um, Learn helplessness is when you are unable to see or try to find a way out of um, your poor circumstance. So like the baby elephant who can't pull up the stake and then when they're a grown elephant, they don't try to escape. In this case, <clears throat> when you feel depression, you feel like you can't get rid of it. And as such, um, you continue with that depression. Um, because you see there as there's being no options for improvement. And again, that has to do with the mindset. People who undergo therapy, um, who recognize they're developing learned helplessness, will learn about um, that second part, which is that explanatory style. So again, it has to do with the individual and how they look at the world. Um, so if your explanatory style focuses on depression lasting, then that's what happens. So if you have a stable explanatory style, it's like the bad situation is going to last a long time. It's just what exists and will exist. If you have an internal explanatory style, you blame yourself. So these bad things are happening because of me and what I've done. And if you have a global explanatory style, um, you don't compartmentalize. It's not like this bad thing is just with this instance. It, it um, affects many areas of your life. Um, so you, you have um, poor feelings about yourself and you assume others have poor feelings about you and it just continues on. Again, with depression, there's really no way out without therapy because people do have to relearn how to think and understand situations in order to break that cycle of depression. Okay. So that's it for today. I already described your assignment. So please get that done. Turn it in. As always, email with questions. And I will see you next class.